All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode here on the Lure Lab. And as always, I'm your host, the Captain Andrew Full. In this episode, and podcast is a part of the Serious Angler Network. And I want to say thank you to everyone who tunes in on a weekly basis uh, for MP3 and YouTube. We stream on both every Saturday morning. Episode goes up at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. on YouTube. So, but first. No guests again this week. I want to say, and I hope everyone has a very good holiday week. It's the 4th of July, Independence Week. Remember um, how awesome that day is, the day that our country was born, right? So, like, and celebrate our freedoms, but do it smartly. Um, Don't blow your fingers off with fireworks. I don't want that to happen. Don't, Don't do dumb things and drive after drinking or be on a boat and driving and drinking on a boat like these are all bad things don't do it be smart with your time remember you're protecting your family etc you're protecting your livelihood so celebrate freedom as best as you can be smart make good good decisions and just have a great time with your family friends and however you choose to celebrate it but today we have an awesome episode for you um, we're going to talk about a bait that is near and dear to my heart, which a lot of baits are that we've talked about on the show. But I remember when I first got introduced to this drop shot bait and, you know, as things go, you're like, ah, it's a gimmick. You're not going to catch more bass with it. But shortly after that, I realized the potential of the Berkeley Max scent flatworm and how many bass it has actually caught me and how many dollars it has won me in local tournaments in the, uh, Big tournaments on Lake Erie, whenever there's smallmouth fisheries, this is a bait that is a huge player on them. And today, we're not really talking about the bait. You know what Berkeley Power Bait is. You know what Max Sen is. So we're not talking about that. I'm going to talk to you guys about how to rig it and the two different size options, right? So you have the 3.6 and the 4.25. And then you also have the flat nose minnow, which is also... A fantastic catcher for both smallmouth and largemouth. We're not going to talk about the flat nose minnow today because there's a bunch of different ways you can rig that. But we're going to specifically talk about options to drop shot the flat worm for smallmouth and largemouth because there are a couple ways that you can rig this bad boy to put a lot of big largemouth in the boat. So the first one we're going to start with is the tried and true, and that is going to be the nose hook. So there are three different ways to nose hook a flatworm. In the original style, right, is just through the center of the body. Now, the cool thing is, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but on every flatworm, when you take them out of the package, you want to rig it up straight and through the middle. There's actually going to be a center line down the middle of it on the bottom of the bait. And... When I'm fishing a solid colored flatworm, I actually flip it upside down because what this does is when it's coming down through the water, the solid one, you have a round bottom. And I don't know if this really happens or not, but I feel like because of that round bottom, as it comes down, it actually has a better shimmy to it than the flat side. Kind of just makes it flat and does really nothing in the water and actually sinks. So the way you're going to rig this bait is you can do, if you have like brown back, so it's got a brown top, white belly, you can flip the bait upside down, find your center line. It's going to go all the way through with your hook. And the hooks that I'm using are Ichikawa CT5s in size 2, 3, and 4. Those are all my favorite ones, depending on the mood of the fish, how light of line I'm using, etc. If the fish aren't very finicky, I'll use a size two and use eight or 10 pound drop shot fluorocarbon. If they're really finicky, I might go down to a size four and all the way down to size uh, to four pound or five pound test. But this is gonna be your standard way to rig a flatworm nose hook. Now, the second way to nose hook the flatworm, this way makes it a little bit more weedless. So if you're pitching around like grass edges and you're kind of, getting it in the uh, weeds every once in a while, you can take it back, measure the hook point to the face. So that hook point's barely coming out. 
you find where to insert it on the bottom of the bait. What you're going to do is you're going to come through. And I'd like to do this too because I found this actually gives the bait a ton more action when it's rigged this way. And this is how I'll rig it about 90% of the time when I'm tournament fishing. There it is. So what happens is that makes that bait actually pivot and roll on the nose of that hook just a little bit more. Makes it weedless. I make that point just barely stick out. So when the smallmouth grabs it or largemouth grabs it, that bait will slide back and they get hooked really well. And I actually found you lose less baits when you hook them like this. But yeah, so here it is. The second nose hooking option through the bottom of the bait. And then if you're using a solid one, you could even flip it over. On this, I believe it is one, two, three ribs back. Yep. We're going to go three ribs back, just barely have it pointed out, and that's how you can rig it upside down so it gets even more body roll on that hook as it's falling through the water column and as you're shaking it on the bottom. Now, the third way to nose hook it, this one's a little bit different, and I owe the credit to a friend. He showed me how to do this, and the Billy's fishing the EQs. Um, I think he's having a relatively rough season so far, but it's first year traveling country, fishing the EQ, so I think he's going to get better. Absolute hammer here up on Lake Erie out of Buffalo. So the third way to rig, to nose rig this, is kind of like a combination of a thread and a nose hook. So you're going to find, you're going to measure it, so you're going to make sure it comes out about the third rib. You're going to go right down the center of the bait. What you're going to do, come out that third rib. And when this is tied on your line, this is the way your flatworm will be rigged on your hook. And I've noticed that this actually helps increase hookups a lot. You tear a lot more baits this way, um, but the hook's back a little bit further in the nose. So when they get the bait, that hook is completely exposed and they get hooked really, really well with that hook on top of the bait like that. So... I hope you go out and try those three ways to nose rig. And I want to hear what your best success is. So send us messages over to our Instagram page on the Lure Lab or leave a comment down below right now on the YouTube as you're listening to this. All right. So the fourth way to rig this is going to be threading it with like an owner cover shot or a G finesse Aaron Martin's hook. I like a size two for the 3.6 and a size one for the 4.25. And we're going to get in that last rigging option here shortly. But yes, you can thread it on. Hook is even further back. Kind of mutes the action of this bait. I really like threading it in the summertime when they're eating the bigger ones, bigger appetite, bigger worm, bigger bass. So I'll, I will thread the bigger one a lot when drop shotting it. This one in the springtime to really dull down the action and fish it really slow, thread it. I feel like the hookup ratio is better. The only thing I don't like about threading the flatworm is the smallmouth has a really small mouth. And a lot of times they get it really, really deep hooked, and then you end up having to cut the hook, the flatworm, pull it out of there, leave the hook in the fish, and that's just never good. So I don't do this one too often, but if you find that they're short striking it and you're still missing a lot of fish, rigging it this way, Try threading it. Maybe that'll help you get a few more fish in the boat. Now, if you're fishing one of those pesky inland lakes where there's a lot of grass, you can actually Texas rig this with a little bit bigger hook and make it weedless. So you pull through. Find where to measure it up. And you'll want to use a bigger hook for this, but you can make it a weedless presentation for pitching around grass. And you probably want to go to a size one on this. So when the fish grabs it, that hook will collapse and come out the bait. And that's why you want a bigger one. This one's just a little bit too small. But that is another option for that straight shank hook. Once again, owner cover shot or G finesse hook. Now, the final way you can rig this, and this is when I'm going to be bubba shotting or using my bait caster or like 20 pound braid with 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon, half ounce weight. And throwing it literally into the grass with half ounce to one ounce weight. I typically do it with a bait caster, but you're going to grab your favorite one or two hook 
in the EWG style. This one ends up being a Ryugi from Japan, the EWG, to Bubba shot it, and then you can just Texas rig it like your standard worm and text pose it so it's weedless, and you can pitch this in and out of grass, and this will get you a lot of bass, especially largemouth green pumpkins. Uh, the shed color was this black shed, I believe. Black shiner. Good option when it's dark out and you'll put a lot of bass in the boat rigging it this way and bubba shotting with a big caster when you're fishing grass. So just quick episode this week for you guys and everyone who tunes in. Enjoy the 4th of July. Have a wonderful holiday. Let me know if these rigging techniques work for you when rigging a drop shot with a flatworm. Hope you get out this holiday week and uh, beat the boat traffic. Put a lot of bass in the boat. And if you're new here on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, leave some comments down below on your favorite way to rig the flatworm or even your favorite drop shot bait. We greatly appreciate it. If you're on MP3 or podcast and your favorite platform and allows you to leave a review, please do so. So the lure lab can be seen by more people who love bass fishing and want to find out the hottest trends and techniques and rigging options for all the baits that are available to you everyone on a weekly basis so thanks for tuning in to this week's episode here on the lure lab we will see everyone next saturday